Hello and welcome back. Another week, another chapter of the Charm Offensive. We're back with the glasses. We're back on week five. Um, and this one, as another, this this book seems to go like short chapter, long chapter, short chapter, long chapter, etc. Which um is it? Just like one week I go to film, I'm like. Ooh, let's let's see if an hour will get me done and then the next episode it's like hmm will I make it to half an hour this week uh, so it's interesting yeah but this one it's it's hard on the it's hard on the long weeks because it, it could be a bit tough on my throat doing all the doing all the talking and it gets so bloody hot in this room um, but then on on the short weeks when I'm reading it it's like I finish and I'm just like are you kidding me? Like, why, why have we finished so early? Because I want to keep reading. Uh, I am really enjoying their dynamic. Like, I'm, I'm loving them. I'm loving them together. I'm hating them apart because it hurts. Uh, and this chapter kind of starts dealing with that it's like obviously we're gonna get into it but it, it's a good chapter in the fact that we get some real some real charliness to it some real charlie thoughts thought processes uh working through things we really see charlie kind of take charge in this chapter where i feel like dev has really been the front runner um throughout most of the show because he's been he's had that like power that control and not in like any um mean like bad sense of power but like he has been uh looking after charlie he has been in charge of charlie he's been helping charlie through these things he's been you know he's had this this edge over him whereas in this chapter we kind of see charlie taking the the forefront and taking charge in figuring some stuff out within himself and within Dev, which I, I really enjoy. But we should just we should just get into the chapter. Uh, like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. And let's get into it. So I'm pretty sure we've we've switched location again. Um, and the chapter opens up with uh, Charlie and Prisia and Jules being like. Dev, it's a day off. Let's go like explore. We'll go day off. It'll be really fun. And Dev's not answering the door. And for a second, I'm like, you know, he's nervous. He's dealing with things. But then Dev doesn't answer the door at all. And you go, oh shit, like something's up. Because it's unlike Dev, especially like obviously he's going through a lot, a lot of feelings to think about, talk about, or not, or not to talk about. But it's interesting, especially avoiding Charlie makes sense but not to do like the group things with people even though Charlie's there that's when you really go oh he's not gonna hang out with Jules and the rest of them something's definitely wrong um and you know he's he's been late to to the set he is not talking to Charlie at all he's barely looking like he'll do his handling duties but semi robotically and he's not even making eye contact like to and you can you can just tell how bad that would be for Charlie too and Dev like you can you can see both sides but since we're on Charlie's perspective here to just be realizing all these things and and having these experiences with Dev and figuring this stuff out and then that person who is being your person to completely shut off and not even give you like eye contact would be like gut-wrenching it would be unbelievable and just hurt your heart so much but I love how strong Charlie stays like he decides that you know even though this sucks and and he he, he kind of gives up and we get into that but even even through that he's got to like he's got to stick to his strength I, I we'll, we'll go in um but he's on a group date and Angie comes up to him is Dev okay? Angie asked during her and Charlie's one-on-one -on -one time. He doesn't seem like his normal self, which also is great. You can see the like characteristic of Angie, which he expa explains, is really in tune with maybe not as much as some of the women that were only there to like promote their social media and stuff. She is paying attention to everyone in the cast, which like makes you like 
like her because you're like, she's not just here, like, she knows the people on the crew, she knows what's, because that's not her handler, but she is, like, focused on all these people as people and knows something's off and know he has a connection with him as, like, his own handler, which I really enjoy that Angie is, like, figuring these things out, even just, like, cares about people. It's just, it's a very nice and small thing. Charlie doesn't know what to say, but he must look thoroughly pathetic because Angie reaches up and takes him by the chin. Oh, sweetheart, are you okay? No, not really. What is it? He knows he can't tell her, but he wishes he could. As the only openly queer contestant, she might understand. He wishes he could tell someone that for one night, Dev felt like his, and now he feels like someone else entirely. I, I just want Deb to be okay again. Angie looks up him with a soft expression. Then she pulls him close, brushly, uh, brushes kisses along his forehead. Sweetie, I know, I know. Charlie looks at Angie, really looks at her, at her beautiful hair and the way uh, which she wears pulled back today, at her dark brown eyes framed with pretty lashes, at her heart-shaped face which comes to a lovely point at the chin, kind of like Dev's. Angie is smart and funny and kind. She listens to him, and she respects him, and he thinks maybe he could learn to love her, at least pl platonically, at least if he really tried. He wonders if loving Angie would fix things with Dev. No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Charlie. That is never going to be the case. Like, never in existence. I don't think you can really... I think it has to be kind of a solo process to get over someone. I can't really talk on this to topic, but I don't think that, you know, when they say like, when you're getting over someone, get under someone else, like that's a classic saying, which is like hilarious, but I don't think getting under someone else really, even getting under them emotionally really helps, especially in this case where he knows it's never going to be serious. Falling in love with someone else or getting a deep connection definitely could do that, but like platonically, maybe not. I mean, as a friend, but it's kind of like a fake friendship because it's a friendship, but it's a fake marriage. You know what? It's, it's not like a true real connection because she wouldn't know. Whereas maybe if he did just surround himself with his friends, well, Parisia, that would help, which he kind of does. He, you know, pulls her away uh, after the group quest is over. He pulls Parisia away and's like, I kind of need to talk to you. Like, I need to tell someone or I'm going to go fucking crazy. And we get into that. He takes three more deep breaths before he can say it. And still, it comes out as a question. I maybe sort of have feelings for Dev and like maybe kissed him. Oh my God, really? <laughs> she asks in a monotone. I am totally shocked by this unexpected revelation. So you knew then, she shrugs. I suspected. How? You talk about him a lot, and when you look at him, your whole face relaxes, she says so matter-of-factly. Charlie feels like he might as well be ass naked on this bench, completely exposed to the world. Plus, as soon as I saw him, it just made sense. He's your type. You think my type is a six foot four skinny dudes with unfortunate haircuts? I can't really explain why, but yes. Oh my god. I a love, because like, some a best friend knows. Especially like, the way she is like, I can see your face around him. Also, you've never talked about literally anyone, and you bring this man up every second of every day of every conversation in existence. So, obviously... I'm gonna think you have the hots for him. She's like, do you think I'm absolutely stupid? But like, you can tell when the people you know the best are feeling feelings of any feelings. Cause you just, you know them to the degree where you're like, well, something's definitely going on. I don't see the need to have the whole sexual identity crisis about it. She says, dismiss dismissively waving her hand in the direction of the tour group of loud French teenagers. Unless you want to have a sexual identity crisis about it. Are you freaking out about being attracted to dudes? Not really, he says. Besides, I'm not really sure I am attracted to dudes. Like, plural. Are you sexually attractive to women? I don't know. I don't think so, no. I never have been before. Then he collapses against her. What do you think it means? So they they, they go into this um, 
you know, talk about uh, asexuality, different sexualities, what, and I, I, I like how the book presents it with, like, a lot of information to be like, these are, like, these are all these different, like, um, not not options, but options, you know what I mean? You, you don't get to pick and choose, but ways for him to help identify himself. Categories. Categories? Identities. That's, that's the word. Jesus Christ. Um, but... Like, Parisia is obviously very learned about the topic and is trying to help him because I think she knows that structure, especially in his life, helps. And it's actually interesting because you would think that um, being able to identify with a category or to be put in said box would 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 help him, but he, he doesn't. <laughs> um, he He's like, I don't know if... This is what I feel. I don't know if I want to be boxed, but I just, you know, I want to be me. He can feel Parisia not against him. That's fair. And look, for me, sexuality is fluid. But I want you to know you're allowed to have whatever feelings you have towards Deb, even if they don't fit into some fairy tale idea of what relationships are supposed to be. You're allowed to want the romance parts without the sex parts, or the sex parts without the romance parts. All of those feelings are valid. You're deserving of a relationship in whatever you want. Oh, wait. I, I skipped the bit where it's like, um, you know... Oh, okay. <laughs> Labels can be nice sometimes. Yeah, that's it. Um, which is... It's interesting because for some reason I would have expected Charlie to like a label. Uh, but I think it's, it's very interesting the fact that he's like, I just want to feel... My fe- like, maybe these feelings are new, but I just want to feel these feelings and go with these feelings and not have to be categorized. I just want the feelings to be mine and mine for devs. You know, I think there, there's a really sweet thing. I was like, me personally, I love labels. Labels for me make things easier. They may help you like identify. I'm, I'm exactly the way I expected Charlie to go. You know what I mean? I, you know, and I don't think anyone has to go under a label that is definitely not but personally i like all my categories at least for myself anyone else the 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 crazy thing for like people that have problems with other other people with you know say any spectrum of anything i don't get why people care so much oh my god i was like i love labels for me i love a label i love knowing what box i fit into i know what love knowing what i categorize as but anyone else who gives a shit? I'm like, as long as they're happy, healthy, safe, whatever. I'm like, do whatever you want. I'm like, who cares? So, sorry, we're going on many tangents and I'll, I'll shut it off. But some people are just like, you know what I mean? When they're like, you can't be this or why are you that? And how can it switch? And I'm like, that has literally, you know, sexuality is fluid. How is you go? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how do y'all look at other people and care so much about what's going on on something that they do that doesn't affect you? Um, some people, I'm just like, I know what I like and what I am. And anyone else, as long as it's like safe and, you know, good and not hurting anyone else. Who cares? Who cares? And that's why I was like, I, I I love that Charlie is that for himself. As long as he is like feeling the feelings that he wants to be and he's happy in his skin, that I'm just like fantastic that he has found that place. I don't know. I'm just happy for Charlie and I hate uh, people who suck. Basically, that's the that, that's that's that point that I was making. Um, but. Parisia goes on, and now he's pretending to have the flu to avoid me because he doesn't feel the same way. How do you feel? What? You said Dev doesn't feel the same way. So how do you feel? He wants to slowly back away from the question, like it's a bomb about to go off in his hands. I feel so much, he hears himself say, running towards the bomb, opening himself up entirely to the injury of it. I think about him constantly. I always want to be talking to him or touching him or looking at him. And I want him to look at me the same uh, in the way I've never wanted anyone to look at me before. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. She says her words are quite uh, a quiet in an in invitation for him to keep talking. Jesus. Um, I can't explain it, but when I'm kissing Dev, I'm not in my head about it. I don't feel the pressure to make it work. 
It just works, and I don't have to force myself to feel anything. I feel everything. He stops himself and cuts his eyes to Parisia on the bench beside him. She's making... <laughs> She's making her soft, gooey face and reaches up to brush his hair off his forehead. He continues. And I've got these eight women who are actually all kind of spectacular, but I just don't want to kiss any of them. And I signed a contract that requires me to propose to one of them at the end of all this. And I'm stuck here on this show with Deb for another four weeks, and he doesn't want me. His voice cracks at the end, and he tries to disguise it as a cough. Parisia doesn't buy it. And you asked him that. Directly. You asked Dev and if he wants you. And he said no? Like, to your beautiful face? Well, not exactly. Has it occurred to you that Dev also had to sign a contract to work on this show and has, le- has legally preclu- uh, precludes kissing you? Ah, uh, that kissing you is probably going to get him fired from a job he loves so much? I mean, I considered. And don't you think there's a good chance that is Dev is currently depressed? Um... Dev's current depression was triggered by the fact he likes you too, and it's literally his job to help you fall in love with someone else. Dev doesn't have depression, he corrects. Take it from someone who has a committed relationship with Lexapro and cognitive behavioural therapy since she was 18, Parisia says. Your handler is in the midst of a major major depressive episode. Charlie shakes his head. She's wrong. Dev doesn't struggle with his mental health. Dev is Dev. He's always happy, always smiling, always thinking about other people. He usually thrives on set, fluttering around to everyone, helping and chatting and feeding off the energy of all of it. <sighs> I, A, first of all, I love that Parisi is like, bro, <laughs> have you been thinking about any of this? Like, seriously, like, have you like thought about this because you're sitting here saying dev doesn't love you dev doesn't want you blah 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 she's given real best friend talk she's like are you an idiot because you haven't talked to him really you haven't figured any of this out you haven't dealt with any of this dev is probably freaking the fuck out too we're gonna think from both she's like i'll give it to you that you've done a lot of like progressing in yourself but you haven't really been thinking about what Dev's been the- feeling, and he's kind of like, oh shit. And then she's like, he's fucking depressed about it. And it's like, he's not depressed. And she's like, uh, yeah, buddy, he probably is. And I like that this is his new, like, oh shit, maybe, like, maybe I need to think, like, you know, Dev always accept- like accepted my OCD and-, and figured out how to help me with that and just accepted it and moved on and went through it. And maybe instead of questioning it, I have to accept the depression and it very much believe that it is happening to him and is real and then work to help him through it in any way that he possibly can or at least show that he is there for him which I think is this great turnaround of like this change of pace for both of them which I really like okay so he finishes his chat with Parisia and then is like well I'm going to talk to Deb and I'm going to do all I can um so I'll read this bit which is the last bit of Charlie's section of the chapter and there is some beautiful writing that I absolutely love in this section like some of my like favorite bits I think is like really beautifully written and it just I don't know there's a lot in this that I really enjoy. Dev opens his eyes and looks up at Charlie. They're the color of his perfect violin and filled with tears and he's the most beautiful person Charlie has ever seen even now. I need you to leave. I don't want you to see me like this. Charlie thinks about all the times he's pushed someone away because he doesn't want them to see his anxiety and his obsessiveness and he thinks about what he really wanted all those times people took him took him at his word he climbs back onto the bed and reaches out for dev dev pulls away fights him off eventually curls down against his chest and holds on tight dev sinks deep into charlie crying onto the folds of his oxford shirt charlie tries to hold on to dev like dev has held dev held him the night in the bathroom carrying his weight Most of the time, Dev is like a human bonfire, walking around, generously warming everyone with his presence. But burning that bright and that fiercely must be exhausting. No one can sustain it forever. Charlie wishes he could tell Dev it's okay to flicker out sometimes. It's okay to tend his own flame, to keep himself warm. He doesn't have to be everything for everyone all the time. 
Charlie wishes he could cup his hands around the feeble dev flame, blow on its embers, and keep him going before he burns out himself out completely. Do you get like this a lot? A few quiet sobs from Dev's throat. I get like this sometimes, yeah, he whispers. Little funks, but I bounce back. I'll bounce right back. How can I help when it gets like this? Dev folds himself tighter against Charlie, all those lovely sharp points digging in. You can just stay, he says, at last. No one ever stays. As Dev falls asleep on his chest, Charlie understands so clearly that Dev has spent four weeks trying to convince Charlie he deserves something Dev doesn't believe he himself deserves. That whatever these little funks are, these evenings of the brain, they've convinced Dev he doesn't deserve someone who stays. Charlie wishes he could find those words, find a way to show Dev what he's worth, even if this thing between them is already over, even if it was only ever practice, but Charlie doesn't know how to show someone they're worthy of being loved, so he just stays. I love, I love that A, Charlie is doing all he can to do what he can in the ways he knows how. He was, he doesn't know maybe how to comfort him emotionally, but he knows that he wants, you know, he wants him to stay, he'll stay. He can do that for him. I love that he is realizing that what Dev is trying to do for Charlie, Charlie has to do for Dev. I love the beautiful, beautiful analogy of the, like the bonfire and the flame and giving warmth to everyone else. But you have to like stoke yourself now and again, because you'll like flicker out. I thought the flame metaphor was absolutely beautiful. I love, it's so just visual to me and it's just, a great way of just showing that and especially for not all sorts of depression but that sort of like person that dev is is great and even i forgot to mention on the last he was like talking about fun dev and this he's talking about warm dev um and that they talk about going back to what ryan like who's like he only wanted fun dev uh yeah it's hard to have people only want that one side of you to only want the good like it's it's so stupid to go into a relationship well ryan maybe didn't want to want it that much but to only expect to have the good moments um and it's just like you have to have those people that can rekindle your fire or that can just you know, deal with your embers and wait for you to, you know, go out, chop the logs, take your time, bring them back to the the hearth, the hearth, hearth, and stock yourself back up and get that flame burning again. I just, I really like the, I really like the whole fire thing. I think it was, it was beautiful. Um, but yeah, for, for Charlie to realize, oh, he can't always be fun, Deb. That is not like possible you can't always be giving you can't always be on you can't always give that much because you know you if everyone takes a log out of the fire to light their own way you know there's never there's not going to be a fire left eventually you know everyone takes a stick there's everyone's got that piece of him it, it's hard when you you're a person like that and people take uh, so much from you because there's only so much anyone can give no matter what they say and you can see Dev just saying little funks like I'll bounce back I'll bounce right back um, Dev is definitely diminishing um, this not severity but severity and and depth of his feelings and what they are you know maybe that sometimes makes you feel better but I think really knowing how deep you can be into it sometimes may look scarier but sometimes you have to be realistic because when you keep saying something small and you can't get out of it i think you really put yourself down more about not being able to bounce back because you know you're like oh it's a little funk i'll get out of it i'll get better it'll be easy it's only small and then you keep can't do that because you're actually downplaying how big it is and then you just go why can't i do this why can't i get out of it i'm so pathetic i can't even get over this small thing and then that depth only gets deeper but to realize that oh maybe this is a lot deeper than i thought I've got to be honest with myself, this is deeper and, you know, to acknowledge that you can, you know, all small steps you can take 
maybe you can like closer towards the light you can be like well i've made this progress and i can be excited with myself and be realistic that even though we're not there we're taking steps towards it or even you know find those people and that support that can get you closer to the light you know what i mean i i am envisioning a dark tunnel and you're getting closer towards like getting out of it um i love i love things to be things in my mind so that makes more so, like that's why i love the fire metaphor because i can see it and that makes sense to me that's why like depression and the depth of a depression and problems to me is like a cave and you know darkness and you can always see that light at the end and you know moving forward i'm a i'm a visual learner so <laughs> um, but yeah i think it's really there's a lot of like psychology that goes into this and thoughts and um i uh, technically i have a degree in psychology so that's a fun little tidbit by no means am i anywhere qualified to talk about anything no i'm nowhere near an actual psychologist i have a degree in psychology it's not that hard to get you just need to pass but like i i love this stuff because i think it is very interesting uh to talk about it's very poignant to talk about you know mental health needs to be talked about so i think it's uh really great to talk and just like kind of work through and and break down these bits and talk about how they work and they're all different for every person and nothing that i say could like click with not necessarily it's not necessarily click with anyone but it's it's interesting how everyone views it and how everyone works i love being able to talk about it in the way it works in my brain and how I think is a good way. Cause like I'm talking about ways to get through it and how it works in my head by, you know, um, admitting and realizing it and making those small steps, but knowing you're getting further, but whether that works for anyone else, who knows? But I, I, I think it's always a great thing to talk about, but there's my two cents. <laughs> we, um, we get to move on to, uh, Deb's perspective of the chapter. So we don't have much left in this chapter, but, you know, uh, Dev wakes up, he realizes Charlie has stayed, which he's kind of happy about, and he keeps seeing Charlie smiles and he talks to him. I think that is that is bringing some life back into him, uh, and Charlie's like kind of trying to get anything out of him about his depression and his episodes and just trying to coax him into talking about these things to maybe... Be able to find out how to help him more. Uh, but he goes and grabs coffee and Char uh, Dev's like, actually, maybe I'll have a shower after like four days and and start, you know, feeling a bit more like him. It may be his mind, but like he's preparing his body at least to get there. Uh, and Charlie comes back and, and does want to keep talking about this um, and being able to relate and being able to find out to help. They're just little funks, Dev insists. I don't usually get like this during work. Charlie squeezes Dev's hand. You know, you know night one, after the boyfriend punched me in the face, when you asked me why I came on this show? Dev isn't sure where this is coming from, but he nods. Charlie takes three deep breaths. The truth is, I got fired from Winhan, my own company. I had a breakdown. Well, I had a lot of breakdowns, actually, but one really big <laughs> panic... A breakdown at our quarterly board meeting. I started to have a panic attack, and I tried to excuse myself from the room, but Josh blocked the door and wouldn't let me leave, because they needed my vote for some expansion he had proposed. You've seen how it gets when I have a panic attack. It was... Rumors... <laughs> uh, rumors started going around that I was unstable. Crazy. Charlie takes an unsteady breath, and Dev knows he shouldn't, but he does anyway. He winds his free hand into Charlie's hair, teases apart the curls until Charlie leans into the comforting touch. Anyway, Josh was worried about my reputation was going to cost him investors. There was an emergency vote to no confidence, and I was removed as CTO. Parisia tried to spin the story, bury the reason I was removed from the company, but it didn't matter. The rumours still got out. He pauses, and Dev explodes. That's such bullshit. There are so many people who have done actual terrible things, who are actively working in tech. Mark Zuckerberg exists. And firing someone for having OCD? That's got to be illegal. I'm surprised Parisia didn't sue. 
Josh never knew about my OCD, Charlie says quietly. It's not something I wanted, to, wanted people to know about, which is to say, I get it. I get not wanting to talk about your mental health with most people, but you can talk about it with me if you ever want to, okay? Deb doesn't know what to do with, Charlie, with what Charlie is offering him. You know, you're good at this, he jokes. A conversation like this in front of the cameras with one of the contestants would go a long way to earn you sympathy. Of course, we'd have to switch mental health for relationship trauma or something, but Charlie smiles, but it doesn't reach his stormy eyes. Charlie has shared something huge and private. He's flung his doors open wide and he's inviting Deb to do the same. Deb thinks about the darkness, about drowning, about tiny tragedy. He pulls away his hands. I really am fine. I'm glad we've started this conversation. I'm glad that it has been put out there. I'm gl so like proud of Charlie to go there and to to talk about that and to tell Dev. That is like, you know, Charlie has seen the entirety of Dev or somewhat of that in his in his script. Uh, but Dev really hasn't had that full opening up from Charlie. He's, he's kept that bit reserved. But he, with that story, he has really given him his all. He's told him about his OCD, but that story is like his, you know, something that is locked away for him. Uh, and I think by leaving that there, even though uh, Dev hasn't, and it hasn't hit him, and he doesn't know what to do with that, and he's still focused on the show, I think deep down he knows it's there. He knows it's there and he knows eventually he can talk to Charlie, or at least the option is there. I, I just think it's really beautiful in the way that it's not all fixed perfectly instantly. I like Dev, and Dev hasn't just like come back. He's, you know, he's getting over it. He's moving through it. He's navigating it. He's still, you know, not back to fun Dev, but, you know, he's taken a step which is really good. And there's, um, in the story notes, uh, for editors, uh, there's a little conversation. I don't usually read these cause usually there's nothing to like, it's all interesting, but there's nothing like that interesting that I want to read out, but there's just one bit here between Charlie and Mark, um, which I think is the host. I'm pretty sure. Uh, cause usually it's between the contestants, but it's a difficult choice. All the women in here are so incredible, and I've loved my time with all of them. Be honest, Charlie. You were skeptical of the process when we started. Maybe in a maybe a bit. It was hard for me to imagine being able to get to a place of emotional intimacy that quickly with another person. I think you can't really understand this process if you haven't experienced it yourself. You're together all the time. You're going through stressful situations together and it bonds you in this unique and intense way. Add to that meeting someone who understands you, who sees you. Do you have a specific person in mind? Maybe. Can you see yourself falling in love by the end of this? Absolutely. I think that is great. I think it is beautiful. I love that he didn't, gen like Charlie purposely, or unpurposely, but he didn't gender anyone in that, topic he you know he's just like you know when you with that person and when you're together with them all the time and he's like you know do you have that person in mind and he's like yeah kind of and could you fall in love at the end and he's like absolutely and you just go holy shit this is like so cute this is so exciting this might be a like he is ready for this and he is figuring this out and he has his answers and I kind of, I want them to go further. And obviously I don't think Charlie wants to bring up all his emotions and his feelings while Dev is in this state because he knows that could overwhelm or throw Dev back further, which is really good. But I can't wait for Charlie to maybe, first of all, I, we need Dev to be feeling a bit better and maybe be a bit honest with Charlie, but I can't wait for Charlie to tell him, hopefully, how he feels. I'm still so excited to see where this goes. I've made my prediction. I haven't got any like new predictions, um, but I, I love the ones I've made throughout the thing, and I'm hoping some of them still stay true. Uh, have I forgotten some of them? Yes, but I know I've made them, so I'm not gonna re-say anything because I'm going to keep them there. I can always go back to... <laughs> it's the good thing about this is I've got everything I've said completely recorded. Uh, so I can just go back to it when I need it. But that was a really good chapter. I loved 
all of like Charlie's growth. I loved like that fire bit. I thought was just so beautiful. I thought it was really well written. I, I just, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed this chapter. And I think it gave, uh, it was very like thought provoking, which I really liked and just, it just made you think, which was, it's always a good one. I love the, goo the, the ooey gooey, I was gonna, like, the love, the, the squishy love, beautiful moments. I shouldn't have gone with ooey gooey. Um, love the ooey gooey moments, too, when they're all fucking horned up. I <laughs> love that as well. Um, but it's nice to have this chapter when you really, like, break things down, talk, think, you know, talk about mental health, talk about what they're going through, and all the, you know, sexual identity. I think those chapters are also really good, especially when they're such, like, well-written. Um... But I had a fantastic time. Uh, a really another great chapter. I, I hope you enjoyed and um, having a great day. And I hope to see you in the next one.